Hello one and all, and welcome to Behind the Glass, your weekly automotive podcast hosted by two rather uninformed enthusiasts. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I'm Sam from the YouTube channel Seen Through Glass. I'm Tony from Gravelwood Car Sales. And you can watch us each week. We hope you enjoy the episode. I took the train this weekend. <laughs> and I saw that. <laughs> So yeah, I went down to my mum's house in Cornwall. It's uh, to drive. It's probably like a five and a half hour drive. Like unless you're like bombing it. What'd you take train for? Well, here let me let me. I'm going to explain that right now, Tony. It's, right. a, it's a, probably like a five and a half hour drive, which is a tad too long at the minute for our daughter. She, I would say, after an hour in the car of her being awake, she's a bit like, get me out of this yeah, thing. Fair enough. So, and she probably could nap for an hour. So then you've got a two hour journey, pretty comfortable. Five, it's like, whoa. Mm. And we could break it up. We, we could like stop somewhere halfway, but then it's like, it's still two and a half, three hours. Anyway, too long. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, hey, you know what? Why don't we take the train? That would be perfect. She can look out the window. We can keep her entertained, like loads of like books and toys they'll be fine and it's a four hour door to door mm -hmm. so um, door to door <laughs> no sorry not door to door four hour station to station yeah I was going to say yeah four hour station to station um, so good Friday we chose to to set off from London Paddington um, in the morning in the morning about 10am uh oh so, yeah <laughs> so as we arrived I was like ooh <laughs> Phil's, Phil's busy in this station. <laughs> it will be busy. Like packed. Yeah. I mean packed. I'm thinking, oh, this is a bit stressful. And everyone's standing around looking at the boards, waiting for their trains. And our train was one of the last to be called. And I start thinking, oh, are all these people waiting for our train? <laughs> uh oh, well, Paddington as well, if you know London, it's not the biggest of train stations. Are no. It's quite small and compact. And, and it really caters for the southwest of England. Correct. So uh, of an Easter weekend... It is quite popular for people down south mm. to head southwest, mm. to head out to Somerset, Devon, Cornwall, uh, Wales, Bristol, etc. And, and Paddington Station will service most of those uh, Waterloo destinations. Waterloo does a bit as well, though, right? Yeah, Waterloo does a yeah. bit, yeah. But, you know, it, anyway, so it's... Uh, when people like to go away on Easter, Good Friday, I would probably should have used my head and thought, hmm, probably not the best time to travel with yeah. a 15-month-old baby. Yeah. Um, anyway, our, our train gets called... I have never experienced anything more hilarious but stressful in my life. Fight. Dude, the gates opened yeah. for the platform. It was chaos. Yeah. I saw an old granny be stampled. I mean, stamped kids. On. Stamped on. Kids were thrown onto the, onto the rails. No one cared. It was like, ah! Like, just panic to get onto the train. I have mm. never run faster in my life. Did I you get run. involved as well? I ran. I ran because right. we, had a, we had a big suitcase and on the British trains, there's about three spots for large suitcases. So I was like, I need a space for the... So I, I legged it, mate. Get to J carriage. People were filming it. Everyone's screaming. You didn't go first class? No, mate. Do you want to know why? Why? My return ticket. So two of us, plus the baby on our laps, return ticket for the weekend, £395. First class, 612 Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, just not worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's technically Mickey. The justification in my head was if we'd taken the F-Pace SBR, the fuel would have been similar. <laughs> Genuinely, the fuel would have been similar. I mean, the fuel, I would have done at least three fill-ups, if not approaching a fourth in the F-Pace SBR. That's what, deadly were, serious. What, you did on 300 quid in fuel? Yeah. Are you joking? One, mate, you underestimate that car. Because no, I travel all around the country in cars. Yeah, but not an F-Pace SVR. No, fair, but I'm just trying to think, like, if we get big cars from parts of the country, I know it's a long way, Cornwall, but... You know what, what would have killed it? It's the driving around in Cornwall. The motorway would have been all right, but it's a smallish tank in that car, and it does churn. Really, yeah. No? Mm, I think a bit under, okay. maybe 70. I'd have to double check, but it feels small. When I fill it up, I'm always like, oh, pleasantly surprised. Anyway, I'm, you're now questioning my justification, which I'm now feeling the pressure of. And be, well, yeah, because I, I'd be amazed, mate, if it, if, you, if it did cost you £400 to get that car there. It back. would be close, honestly. I it, think it would be about 200 quid okay, tops. Or 250 or <laughs> <laughs> It would have been a lot. Anyway, long story short, get, get on the train, find our spot, perfect. Look at the watch. I'm like, oh, we're, we're 30 minutes behind. Who knew? Ten, we're supposed to leave at 10.04 and it was 10.34. And I was like, oh, well, you know, it is what it is. Off we go. 
train is packed, right? People are standing up and down the corridors. There's bags everywhere. No one can move. People are arguing over seats. I reserved that seat. Well, sorry, mate. I'm already sitting down. No, that's, you know, like just chaos. Oh, my God. I put a post up on Instagram and someone messaged me saying, hey, I'm in the control room right now. The train before you has about 750 seats and 1,200 people boarded. Nearly, nearly double. But but that's the train company's fault. It's over ridiculous. The ticket. I mean, it's unsafe. Yeah, yeah. And so we set off and then found out that part of the line had been flooded. So we had to take a diversion. Then someone pulled the passenger alarm because it was so overcrowded. They sort of passed out. There was no air con. So we had to stop at an emergency station. They had to be taken off. There was people. What would the match have been? Charlton Athletic versus Exeter? They were all going to that. Possibly. Division something yeah, football yeah. game. They were all, hey! As we sat down at 10 a.m., three huge boxes of beers on the table. Boom, boom. Get on, Saturday! I was like, oh my God. Charlton fans, they're going to the Charlton extra, fans yeah. going in large. Um, it was chaos. So, so we ended up being 90 minutes delayed, pure mayhem, couldn't breathe, couldn't go to the loo, couldn't move on the carriage. And I thought, this is absolute hell. Why do people do this? Delay People do it every day, mate. Every, <laughs> every day. Every single day. Every day. And, and, and at that point, I was like, okay, we should have driven. Because, yes, you're probably right. It wouldn't have been 400 quid do you, on fuel. Do you I was at Paddington once. You remember me probably messaging the group and said um, about train travel. And I said, how the hell do people do this every single day? I think it's a scam. It's a full-on scam. It's a full-on scam. And the thing is, okay, so the journey back, just to give... Uh, GWR, Great Western Railway uh, credit. The journey back was lovely. So we had we had okay weather. So you asked about the weather across the weekend. It was good. We had, you know, sunny spells, I think you'd call it. Um, but the, the the journey back is beautiful. That first two hours from, so we're down near Truro, that first two hours back towards sort of Exeter, Taunton Way, stunning. Yeah, yeah, nice uh, views. Incredible yeah, yeah. views. You're yeah, down yeah. by the coast and you're going to the beautiful the roll, yeah, rolling yeah, yeah. countryside. Yeah. Um, that was glorious. We had a, a comfortable uh, table. Um, the journey kind of flew by. We were bang on time. Arrived into Paddington three minutes late. All hunky dory, easy. So I'll give it to them. But the the cost is hard to stomach. With the baby, the journey back. I'm like, okay, this does make sense. This has been easier. She's been fine. We fed her. We haven't had to stop a million times. Like, this makes sense. But it's too unreliable, right? Not just that, mate. I always thought that public transport was meant to be affordable transport. Mm hmm. But you've just proved that it's more more inconvenient and more money than it is to go in a car. Uh, well, yeah, on a bank holiday weekend or Easter weekend. Yeah, yeah. But there was another reason why we chose to do that, because last time we did this a year ago, it took us six and a half hours to get from my mum's house to my parents' house, which should have been three and a half hours. So it was because of the traffic. Because of the traffic. Mm. So, yeah, a bit of a disaster. Anyway. Long don't travel short. in uh, D- Bangkok anymore. D- yeah, basically, basically, just stay home. <laughs> stay at home, yeah. <laughs> don't go anywhere. What an absolute disaster. Yeah. Um, anyway, we've got some stuff to chat through, uh, apart from our Easter weekend plans. How's, how's work? What Work's all right? You got cars coming and going? Yeah, yeah, busy. I yeah, want to yeah. quiz you Still in this busy. episode on your new market segment. Yeah. Cheaper cars. Oh. We're going to get into it towards the end, because I, I have some questions. I've been looking at some lower-end family cars, uh-huh. 20K-ish. Yeah, yeah. And it's obviously what you... I'm not going to say what you specialise in now, but where you're trading a lot of cars. So. Yeah, yeah, well, because it's what's selling. It's what, what, literally what I'm selling. I'm getting them in and they're going out quicker than I can get them, basically. So, Well, I'm going to pick your brains on it mm. in a moment. But first off, I want to touch on last week's visit, my visit last week, to Ferrari. To Ferrari. Yes, indeed, sir. Mm. Jumped on a plane. Much easier than the train. <laughs> and cheaper. Oh, and way cheaper. <laughs> and flew down to Maranello. Oh, mate. I can't help but just arrive into that town and just buzz. I'm just like... Whoa. I've been to the town, but I've never actually been to Ferrari. Really? And I've not been on that track either. Oh, mate. I want to have a go around. Ferrano. Yeah. I don't think you can just, like, go on the track. No, of course like, It's not like book a track day. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite... Yeah, so let's get into all of it, I suppose. So, have you even have you you've driven past the factory gates? Yeah, like literally, that's it. You've been to lunch there. Have you gone no. to nothing? No, you've literally. Oh, no. Well, then you're kind of missing everything because Good. the the village in the town is amazing, yeah. and there is like you know everything's Ferrari. There's all those uh, rent a supercar for the day. There's the Ferrari Museum, which is very yeah. good. I have to give that a shout out. Great museum. Um, Not and been then, in there either. Oh, mate, we're going to go back. We've got well, that's a road trip. That's a future destination. Okay. Um, so lots to do, but but. 
the real like specialness is inside the hallowed gates because i think ferrari's biggest <laughs> selling point is the in inverted commas club mm. because when you buy a ferrari or you own a ferrari you gain entry to well the ferrari owners club but the unofficial ferrari owners club just the ferrari owners family and actually, they do, Ferrari themselves said this. I've really drunk the Kool Aid. Um, Again. Because, yeah, because back in the day, really early on in the sort of 40s and 50s, you know, Enzo sort of almost hand picked who bought his car. Mm. So he knew everyone. They still and, do that now. Basically, <laughs> you're right, actually. Um, <laughs> just not the Romas. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it, it's that warm feeling, isn't it? When you, when you own a Ferrari, you do feel like you're kind of. There's no other brand like it, mate. Yeah. Literally no other brand like it. And so when you are welcomed into the Ferrari gates, one way or another, it's that like times 10. Mm. So you have the Cavallina restaurant opposite, mm -hmm. which had a refurb a few years ago. Absolutely delightful. That's the kind of go-to for easy lunches, the client lunch, stuff like that. Then you've got the Montana restaurant down the road, which is where you always see the photos of like a Schumacher in the kitchen with the chef yeah, and, yeah. you know, all that stuff. And there's memorabilia everywhere. And drivers still go there now. Um, but inside the factory gates, you've got the Classic department, which is always there to visit. You've got the Atelier, you've got the actual factory itself, you've got the Formula One team, and then, yes, you've got the Fiorano race circuit, which was, uh, I think, opened 1970s, early 1970s. Um, so there's just so much. You're just literally overwhelmed with Ferrari. Yeah. Like, passion, enthusiasm. You can't help but just go, oh, my God, this is just unbelievable. Um, mad, mad to think that Lewis is going to go there next year, isn't it? Well, okay, so... Oh, we've got so much to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so the reason why you may not have seen much of this is Ferrari keep it very close to their chest. So, mm. you know, it, it's not really something that they're allowed to be filmed. It's not something they're allowed to be showcased because they want it to be reserved for customers so that when you go there and you're specking a car or collecting a car, factory collection, uh, a driving experience like the one that I did, it, it feels special. You haven't seen it before. It's not on the and internet, yeah. It's very clever the way they do that. Well, they it... used to be very protective, mate. Do you remember early in the early days of us filming and stuff and we wanted to go to a Ferrari deal? You used to have to get permission. Still I mean, do. Is that still, still the case? Still yeah? do, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, you have to seek prior permission from the PR team. You know, they're very protective over their brand yeah, yeah. in general. And the factory is like, you know, the complete, you know, mm -hmm. hub of that. So, uh, yeah, so I was there to take part in their their. Corso Pilota Classique program, which is a, a driving course for the classic cars. Yeah. So I guess more on that on the main channel video, which I think is coming this weekend. Uh, I mean, for me, dream come true. Go to Ferrari and drive classic Ferraris. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was kind of the no, focus. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, for you, it would have been a total yeah. disaster. Um, but uh, yeah, the focus on us was the classic department. But before that, we went on the factory tour. So full factory You've done tour. that before, right? I've done that before, but not for a long time, okay. to be fair. And a few things I picked up on. So firstly, they are building a lot of Romas. Yeah. Like, oh my God. Yeah. Roma, 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 it's Roma. It's 9-11, Roma. isn't it? Mate. Yeah. We talk about how they have bombed in value. Mm. They will bomb harder. Mm -hmm. Because even our tour guide was like, everything you see today will be a Roma. Mm. You see an engine, it's for a Roma. Mm. Or maybe... Roma spider. <laughs> but, that, like, but, that, but that's actually good for the rest of the cars because they can only build a certain amount of cars a year. Yes. Ferrari. So so that's good for the the mid engine stuff because they just can't build them. The, they can only build ten thousand cars a year, right? Well, they're aiming at less still. Fair. So 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 they was it seven and a half thousand per year? That's normally what they I think. Build. That, and and, and yeah, so yeah. the demand is increasing, but they don't want to demand. They don't want to increase production because yeah, they want yeah. to keep the exclusivity. Yeah. So apart you're right. from Roma, yeah, <laughs> apart from Roma. So they are churning Roma and Roma Spider uh, everywhere. And Pura Sangue, by the way, whatever they tell you about the exclusivity of Pura Sangue. Oh, Oh my God, they are churning Pura Sangue. But, uh, Lamborghini done that with Urus. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's a complete it, lie. It's go, 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 it's go. Absolutely. You know, printing money, as they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was the first few things that I, I realised. Um, so those cars will continue to be great things to pick up because at 110 grand, which they will be soon enough, what a car. Mm. I mean, they're already 140 at what a car, but yeah. um, anyway. Uh, next thing, colours are in. Uh, Ferrari Red is out. I mean, like all these manufacturers, and we've spoken about before, we did a whole episode talking about it. The the colour variety on the production line, mental. But the the, the the thing of that is, mate, in general, most 
people that buy their first Ferraris probably still buy a red one? Apparently not. Really? Yep. Apparently the consensus wow. is from 296 onwards. Oh, and that's Roman, changed before, them recently. That's yeah. what he said. Yeah. So our tour guide said it has been a big change in recent years. Okay, fair. Where people are spending a lot for colours. And he, his non-official word, but his guess or estimation was the desire for exclusivity. Be yeah. Because there's a, uh, an increase in production from 10 or 15 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Well, if you want exclusivity as well, you have to buy a Ferrari because that's what it's all about. And actually, when you look at the design of a Roma and a 296 and probably even an SF90, they all look crap in red. And they all look much nicer, apart from the triple layer reds, by the way, because well, I think they look nicer than the triple layers. But the normal Rossa calls are red. I think they look like terrible. I think the Roma looks much better in a darker colour. I would agree sure. with you on the Roma. A Rosso Corsa Roma, tough. And and yeah, and and I'd also say that about two nine six. I think a Rosso Corsa two nine six looks a bit like mm. a bit bland. Yeah, I saw a Rosso Mugello, which is that stunning original Alpha flat red, that yeah. dark stuff yeah, oh, on well, a two nine six with silver while. wheels, and that was beautiful yeah, seen that for a while yeah that was a really nice spec but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you there mm. I'm definitely not going to disagree with you but yeah colours everywhere saw so a few 812 comps not 812 comp aperters floating through just lots of amazing cars but in all kind of variety of colours next thing I learned the full EV plant or production line was in development coming soon because the first full EV Ferrari on its way <sighs> So that's kind of wild. Good luck with that. Considering they spent the entire tour telling us that the heart and soul of the Ferrari is the engine. Mm. The whole point of a Ferrari is the engine. Enzo would tell you, you're buying the engine with a car around it. Yeah. In this production line, you see the car comes to the engine. The engine doesn't go to the car. Oh, by the way, there's our full EV production yeah. line. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you never know. Ferrari might really just blow it out of the park there. Um, what else did I want to touch on that I learned during the factory tour? Saw so a few SF90 XXs. Yeah. They do look wild. Mm. They do look completely different to an SF90. Yeah. Like it really takes two seconds to cut the delivery cars. As well. Yeah, already yeah, out, right? Audio. Um, what else did I see? Hold on a sec. Something else popped into my mind that I thought about. Uh, oh, the thing which really blew me away is firstly how handcrafted the engines still are. Yeah. Like, like, there's a lot of robots, of course, but they keep talking about how they use robots for precision. Mm -hmm. It's all about when they need to be very precise is where they use the robots. But there was so much still going on, hand-assembled yeah. engines. And what's awesome to see and really motivated me, and I text you saying, I think I need to buy another Ferrari, and especially a V12, because the V12 engine line is completely different to the yeah. V6 and the V8. Yeah. So, you know, there they do use a <clears> lot more robotics. Um, the V12... It's a single station. You know, you've got one engineer building a whole engine. Uh, it's very handcrafted, very few robots. It's all a very sort of, uh, what's it called? Um, when it is not handcrafted. Uh, Hands on. No, no, like artisan. Artisan? Or no idea. No, anyway. It's very bespoke feeling, even mm. though I'm sure it's not because they're churning engines. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> that was amazing to see. Um, there's probably, actually thinking about it, there's probably only one other brand that you can probably half compare that handcraft experience and that's Rolls Royce I think the rest of them are literally robots obviously what about AMG yeah I mean you, you probably get like the Porsche GT department and AMG you get like departments mm. but as a manufacturer that really is still hands on it's probably mm. only Ferrari and Rolls Royce yeah. left Yeah, you know because you've got the M departments and the RS departments but I mean, they're probably fettle, but I bet they're not involved like they are. At that It actually surprised me. Having mm. been on quite a few of these factory tours, it, it, it was amazing to see just how hands-on they are with it. Uh -huh. And it really did make you think, or made you remember that the engine was the big special part of the car, which I know is something you banged on about a few weeks ago. Yeah. But this really highlighted it. Oh, that was it. Maserati. Uh -huh. The Levante engine was still built in the Ferrari factory up to a few years ago. Oh, was it? Yeah. They literally shut down the production line for the Levante engine, like, literally a few years ago. Amazing. So I didn't know that. I thought that all disappeared a long time ago when they split from yeah. FCA and the Hostel yeah. Atlantis thing. Um, so I think those were my takeaways from the factory tour. We're, we're, you'd enjoy it. Fun oh, to mate, see. Mate, like just talking about it makes me want to go and buy yeah. another. I'm just about to go and buy another Ferrari. Oh, oh, mate, I text you. I literally text yeah. you as I was doing the tour, being like, oh, Tony, I'm going to buy another Ferrari. I was literally like <laughs> on Auto Trader as I was going on the factory tour, thinking, what could I get here? Yeah. Um, and we probably get into that maybe next week after the main channel really goes out because there was one car that really what, blew me away. Um, 
So, but you've already got a Ferrari. Uh, I need another one. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need one that works. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then we moved across to the race circuit to Fiorano, which is now the home of the uh, Corsa Cliente, the XX program, the F1 cars. Always impressive to see. What I got to the chance to do was the 499P, so the Le Mans car, but the customer program for the Le Mans car. Oh, okay. That is wild. I bet. I mean, who is getting in that? I mean, you, like, that mate, that's a Le Mans car yeah. with no holds barred. Just flat out. Yeah, I'd have a go. Mate, you would love to have, love a go, love to have a go. But that is, you've got to you've got to half know what you're doing. Yeah. I mean, that's, and I said, I said, because like, I heard a rumour a long time ago, which they've never, ever, and they wouldn't actually clarify or, or confirm, that with the F1 cars, because of course, you know, that, that's, the, that's the gem in the Ferrari customer experience is an F1 car. And the way that those are sold is it's an auction. It's an, it, they, they, they team up, I think with RM Sotheby's and they invite. Can you drive them though? Yeah, of course. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Fully running F1 cars. Once they you run, buy them, you can drive them. It's a part of the course of Cliente program. Oh, wow. So they do full on track days and everything like that. So. Oh, that's a crash. So they'll, let's say, let's say we're at a level, right? We've got our 20 uh, Ferraris. We're at that point. We would get a call saying, right. Uh, hello, Mr. Sam. We would, we have the opportunity to buy a 2010 Ferrari F1 car. That's going to be an auction held on the 18th. You're invited to take part. Amazing. You'd also be invited. And they'd be like, I don't know how many people, they didn't actually say how many people are part of the auction, but it's very select. And then you just bid out because they said they don't put a value on it because of course they wouldn't because some people will go insane. If, you, if you're someone that was a huge Alonso fan and you were obsessed with the season that he was racing, you're going to pay way more owners mm. for that particular car. But I heard a rumor that if you weren't a great driver, you would get offered the cars with traction control. Fair. But they're the Schumacher cars, or at least the earlier era. So they've inherently got more value, or people care about them more, don't realise that they're being sold the cars that are a little bit easier to drive. <laughs> and then the cars which are a bit more complex and harder to drive are offered to the better drivers, yeah, even though the value might not be there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so people go, oh my God, I'm buying a Schumacher car. It's because you can't drive for crap. Yeah, uh, but yeah, that, yeah. Well, I mean, I say, totally unconfirmed rumour. Like Schumacher. She's to crash every time, every week. You're saying that to wind me up and I'm not going to bite. Um, 499P, though, like, I don't know. I mean, that must be reserved for the, like, they must look at the court, the F1 driver program and go, that guy knows what he's doing. Let's offer him one of these. Yeah, yeah. Because it's serious tech, but very cool to see. Serious money, mate, let alone tech. Oh, yeah, I think five mil. Yeah, it's like insane. Unbe unbelievable. Um, yeah, F1 cars, so, yeah, so they do run all those. Um, and then, and then, and then Fiorano itself, yeah, so the racetrack, which is now my third time i think driving around there which for me is like almost is the same level as my f1 car driving experience because i spent my youth looking at imagery of schumacher testing around that track mm. i've followed car launches car development around that circuit spy shots all these things like that so anytime i get that i'm like <gasps> hello to ground yeah. um and got to spend a whole day fighting around Pretty much in the rain, which was a bit of a bummer. So what? Uh, I mean, but who cares? Who yeah. cares? Super cool. So yeah, I left going right. I need to. I need to buy another car, um, <laughs> which was a disaster. <laughs> um, but we'll, I'll, I'll try and find a way to get you in. We'll, we'll try and do something. We should do something. Yeah. Yeah. I'll send them an email and see if we can do. I wonder what we could go and drive or do. Or we've got to do something yeah. to give you the full experience. Yeah, that'd be cool. Talk about it some more. Um, but yeah, that's the main channel video coming soon. But speaking of Ferraris-ish, something I wanted to quiz you about. Over the last few weeks, seen a lot of my contemporaries, YouTubers, buying crashed celebrity cars. Yeah. So Matt Armstrong famously, famously, uh, went out and bought the Marcus Rashford crashed crashed Mansell well, Ray. Well, he's got a little bit of a history of buying like half famous people's cars anyway. Didn't he buy, is it Adam? Adam LZ's yeah. GT3? Yeah. So yeah, so he obviously knew the format worked yeah. and had this opportunity to go and buy the Rashford car. And then literally, I think the last few days, Stradman, James went out and bought um, Michael B. Jordan, who's a famous American actor, has crashed 812 super fast. Did he? So I think maybe, you know, knowing James, he's probably half seen what, you know, what's going on here. And went, what the others are doing. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I might do something. Yeah. Um, uh, so what I Brilliant marketing that is. Oh, it's a fantastic, it's you know, unbelievable yeah. content stream. Yeah. Uh, but what I wanted to dive into and actually pick your brains about is where does this sit in your world? So firstly, just to understand what a cat N, cat S, cat whatever, category write-offs or, or breakdowns mean, 
if you rebuild a car here in the UK, is there a market for it? Do you see them? Uh, is there disasters where people rebuild them and then try and hide the fact that they've got a cat, whatever? Like, how does it all work? Because as a YouTuber, I see the legs in it, 1 million percent. Amazing content. You know, the car hopefully could pay for itself if you're getting enough views. You end up with an incredible car at the end if you don't plan on selling it. But how's it what it's like? Because I was looking for an A6 All Road recently. <laughs> And there was a Cat S car, Flipping stunning on. spec. And I thought, oh, but I didn't actually really understand what Cat S meant. Yeah. So talk me through it. <clears throat> How does it work? And is there actually any legs in this? So there's obviously different categories of insurance write-offs depending on the damage, essentially. So uh, uh, they changed it. It used to be A, B, C, and D. But they changed it. You've got uh, N, uh, Cat S. Yeah. Uh, and there's a there's a more serious one as well. There's a few. It, it's not really my world. I understand it, and I definitely don't buy that stuff. And I wouldn't. I've been offered it before in part exchange and stuff. But um, and this is all to do with insurance, right? Yeah. So it's all about the value of the car and the damage of what what's been what's been damaged. So, but you know, if you've got like a ten grand car, like a German car that's fairly expensive to fix, and it's had a crash. It's only been like a wing and a bumper. Sometimes they write it off because mm. they go, it's not, it's not worth repairing. Or another good one. I had a customer the other day, um, the, not the other day, actually, it was a couple of months ago, bought a new shape RS3 from me and uh, his RS6 had blown up. Water en engine wise. Water damage, yeah. Okay. So it obviously went for a puddle, blew his engine up and it was 25 grand for an engine. Wow. So they wrote the car off. The car was 35 grand. They wrote it off. And so that so a category only gets applied in the UK when the car is written off. As in, you've got written off, repaired. Okay. And then you've got like written off as in, it has to, you can't, it can't go back on the road. As okay. in, you're, you know. You cannot drive this. Yeah. And Structural damage, like chassis damage. Yeah. And that, so in the old categories, that used to be A and B. Okay. But. They've changed the categories. The okay, fine. They've changed them, but but yeah. So so if you saw old school Cat A B or you know serious structural chassis that like should not be driven. So I think Cat N is non-structural. I think that's what the N stands for. Should we bring up the actual? For. Should we bring them up? <clears throat> and and Just the S means structural damage. So it's more serious, basically. I'm pretty sure that's right. Insurance categories UK. Just so that we uh, know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, no, kind of non-structural can be like bumpers and and stuff like that you know that's not damaged the structure of the car basically okay so uh da, 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 what car gets written off okay what is a cat a cat a car is for scrap only these yeah. cars are so badly damaged they should be crushed and never reappear on the road yeah cat b cars broken up for parts the body shell should be crushed Cat B signifies extensive damage, although some parts are salvageable. Yep. Should, uh, these vehicles should never reappear on the road. Cat S means the vehicle has suffered structural damage. This could include a bent or twisted chassis or a crumpled zone that has collapsed in a crash. Cat S damage is more than just cosmetic, therefore, and the vehicle will need to be professionally repaired. Yeah. Also, it won't be safe to drive until then. And a Cat N haven't sustained tr structural damage. The issue may be cosmetic yep. or a problem with the electronics. Fine. So a Cat N, if you see a cat N for sale, five or ten grand below market value, it may be worth considering, depending on the repair shop and the repair work. Mm, the, the, as far as I knew, as well, some insurance companies they won't insure. Ah, interesting. Reinsure re category cars. Uh, there, there are there will be specialist ones out there, but there'll yeah. be, there'll definitely be insurance companies that just say because they ask you, don't they? Yeah. Has it ever been in a write off before? And blah 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 blah. When well, you do your insurance, and if yeah. you say yeah, it's a cat. This sometimes they go sorry, we can't insure you. Ah. So, but but also as well, like there's a in our opinion, there's a huge value difference. So okay. it's not like trade value. Just in general, it's it it's not like some people think. Oh, it's like. 10% and I don't specialise in this anyway but and when some occasionally we get offered cars in part exchange and they say it's a cat in or a cat S and I just say I'm, sorry, I, I, I'm not taking it in I don't yeah. I don't want it I've no avenue for it I, I definitely wouldn't resell it um, because they're never the same mate when a, when a car's mm. been crashed contrary to what some people say they're never the same 
e- even at, like, I, I would agree on a cat s if that means structural but even a cat n like let's say well you're right if it's been written off it's not a fender bender is it, it that's the whole point well some stuff is it really does depend on the value of the car so um my uh colleague one of my colleagues who i work with he sells cheaper stuff and he took a cat n uh suzuki swift in okay so a little cheap yeah. car um purely because an ambulance had gone down the side of the car and it had to go through insurance so because it went through insurance they wrote the car off because the car was only worth two or three grand um so they wrote the car off mm. so but really that car's up so you just repaint the side sure so good that, to that, go get good to go but there's no real damage so it does always depend on the on the value of the car value of the car and what the damage is and what the yeah. and what the damage what, is or yeah. was or, let's say, yeah. or was yeah. but also as well you you have all these um the, the 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 biggest problem that we have as dealers is um sometimes cars are smashed up and written off and they're not put on the register so why is that that that's what i was trying to that's get the insurance companies so what the insurance because that that was the whole thing with the with the Rashford car right is it didn't actually have a category against it, but the problem is they get a certain amount of time I believe to put the put the the category on or sometimes it just doesn't get done okay so what happens is <laughs> the the cars repaired I mean there's there's there'd be hundreds of thousands of cars out there that have had serious crashes been repaired and um, they've not got any. Any N or S, but or you know that happened with my Alpha Four C, mate. They're, 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 there's hundreds of thousands out there, and they, they never put the marker on. So that's why you obviously get these like V Car now, and these other these other companies. Car out Vertical. There. Yeah, that's probably another one. Not yeah. sponsored. No, not sponsored. If they want to, <laughs> yes, please. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> we're here. <laughs> yeah. So that obviously they they do different checks. So uh, us as a dealer, we don't just rely on. HPI, which is the the common thing that dealers use, we rely on other other sources mm-hmm, to make sure mm-hmm. the car's okay. Um, there's lots of telltale signs as well of a of a car not being right, as in in the trade. One of them being a a, a change change of owners very quickly with like very little mileage. Just change of out. So like if a car's been whacked and been repaired. <clears throat> and it goes through like three owners in a year. Mm, there's sometimes alarm. Then okay. you, you you know you check a bit more. You go back, yeah. But I, being my job, and I do it every day. <clears throat> I can. You have a sixth sense for mate, it. I can I can tell from a mile off when yeah, the car's yeah. been involved in we'll a crash. We'll go to a Tesco Park going dodgy, dodgy, it, li- dodgy. Literally, yeah, but that's yeah. that's my job. I can tell yeah, from course. that's all experience that you build up over the years. But um, there's. There's also a company called, is it Copart? Yeah. 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 Where you so, can buy wrecked cars. And I think Matt yeah. buys yep. stuff yeah, from yeah, yeah. Copart. So some of that stuff isn't registered. So it's been mm. heavily crashed yeah. and it's not registered. And they, they buy it, they repair it and put it back on the road as a normal yeah. car. But And there used to be dealers that would earn an absolute fortune out of that by the way i think in america it's very different and that still happens they have something called i think they have salvage titles in america so that's their categories but yeah I, you know I, there are youtube channels out there of people yeah. doing exactly this i'll tell you another thing that goes on as well by the way so again this is this is less now but it does still happen i know it happens um so you can buy a car from copart yeah then what you do is the rats the not the proper dealers the rats and they are rats they're scum they go and nick a car off someone's driveway, right. break the car up, yeah. fix the co-part car, and then sell the co-part car. <laughs> and that happens. Like that, That's a thing, mate. Yeah. That genuinely happens. Uh, so, uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much stuff that goes on. You, like it's, it's, you have to be so careful just in general when you buy a car. Like I can't tell you how many. And it's bad. I mean, it, we are heavily regulated as, as dealers now, much more than we were. But there are still, excuse my language, some shithead dealers about, like there are in every industry, right? And you do have to be careful where where you buy a car from. You know, always make sure you buy from a, a proper dealer that's FCA regulated and and that the, the, the works closely with finance companies. Because this stops all this. So a finance company won't 
finance a cat in or a, mm -hmm. they won't finance. So <clears throat> you're, as a consumer, you're so much better. We've said this before. You're so much better protected buying a car on finance because mm. the finance company own the car. So if, for instance, this V car, you bought a car and it hadn't gone on the register and the finance company financed it, they'd done their checks. I know they do better checks now, but they'd done their checks and the car was on finance. Then that's the finance company where's the problem, mm -hmm. not not the customer. Sure. So if you pay cash for it, you're it's, kind of on your own. Yeah, it's yours. So, so what is the, I can understand the incentive for a seller, for a fixer upper or whatever, but... As a buyer, because Auto Trader is pretty good at, at, at they advertising them. They list it. Yeah, yeah. And there are more on there than you would realise. Like if you're doing a wide search, mm. CAD S, CAD N, they come up quite a lot. And they're not that much. I mean, they are cheaper. But, but they're, they're not, not that much cheaper. That's what I mean, you know. No. That A6 is a perfect example. Beautiful all road, you know, Vors, near Vorsprung edition, you know, and it was five or six grand less as a CAT S, which we've just learned is a more significant structural damaged car. So... So as far it, as I'm concerned, but, but just before we carry mm -hmm, on, mm -hmm. when it comes to values, mm -hmm. if you're looking at an N or an S car, and you <laughs> you 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 know you're encouraged to buy it, as in you want to buy it, it needs to be fifty percent of the value of a fifty percent. Uh, wow. I think okay. so. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, for sure. It needs to be fifty percent yeah. of the value of of a of a proper car. Okay, interesting. That's what I think yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, I, 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 and then, then I guess there's an incentive. Because at that point, let's say you just take a, 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 a desirable sports car. Let's yeah. just take a 911 Carrera S. Yeah. You know, if you're buying a 992 911 Carrera S at 40 grand rather than at 80, yeah. and it's a Cat N. Or even if it was or, 50. Say it's an 80 grand car and it's 50 grand. And it's a Cat instance, N, and not it, a Cat S. Yeah. Happy and days. It, yeah, and it's an N, N or an S. I mean, there should be a, dif a, a value differential between... And then an, an S, by the way. But if an eighty gram Porsche is a is a cat N, that's had quite big damage, mm, mate. Mm. You know what I mean? That's still yeah, had for 40, the right off, yeah. That still had forty or fifty grand's worth of damage. I know that doesn't go far on a nine eleven, but it's that it still yeah, has had carbon fibre parts. Yeah, what, what, yeah whatever. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> the Ferraris are the worst. I mean, they normally repair them, but like if certain for, bits in your carbon fibre wheels. You've damaged, 20 grand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. If a you front bumper for a piston yeah. is 25 grand. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's quite easy to suddenly get a, a cat category. Like if you have a half serious accident in a in a Ferrari, mm -hmm. sometimes they repair them. But again, when you're in that world, they have to go to Chartwell. Yeah. So there's only one authorised repairer that, 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 that they can go to. Well, and, and sometimes Ferrari themselves don't want those cars going back out. A bit like with that Rolls Royce. They log all Ray. the... They log all the parts, mate, and they know it's in an accident, so it doesn't go back in the network. That's exactly it. They, yeah. don't, want, they don't want anything to do with it. Yeah, so yeah. at some point, they might just say, like, no, no, thank you. Um, yeah, well, look, I, I think it's interesting. You know, I, I can see why people would be tempted from a value point of view, but I think you just got to do yeah, do that research, find out what the damage was, who repaired it, how it was repaired, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because sometimes it's tempting, but actually, you've now sort of slightly highlighted that, really, maybe. Because the, the thing you've got to remember is you might be saving on the purchasing, but the insurance could be a real headache. And, well, it depends if you're financing or not, but you might struggle to get finance. Yeah. So you might be looking at that thing and there's a deal. But uh, 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 If we really wanted to talk about this at length as well, get Matt on. Well, it's yeah. He, 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 it's, his, it's his world. It's, his world, it's, it's it? not my world. So okay. um, Watch this space. Yeah. Um, well, keeping the theme around potential bargains, uh, another thing, I'm, just, I'm picking your brain this week, Tony. You are, yeah. It's, I quite like it sometimes. It makes me think. Instead of <laughs> just sitting here listening to you talk like old crap. <laughs> <laughs> about the Ferrari factory. I'm dreaming I'm going to with cheap robots. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get me oh, better. So out. beautiful. <laughs> Rosso Mugello. Um, so I have been browsing a lot. People think, I think people know, I'm thinking of probably going to be getting an X3 for Vicky as the mm -hmm. kind of run around family car um, when the F Pace and the i5 go. Um, and I've been looking and then, you know, there are a handful of nice cars, sort of mid to late 20s for X3s, like a 2018 car, not amazing specs. So they're kind of there or thereabouts. Yeah. And I started thinking, oh, it's quite a lot of money to spend there for just what's going to be her, you know, doggy run around. Um, and look, you know, she can go buy a car herself if she wants to, but... Um, She's got more money than you. She does, literally. <laughs> you have no idea how much money my wife wastes. Oh, no. How do you think I'm in a Ferrari? Yeah. Um, <laughs> She, uh, so I started thinking, oh, you know, mm. let's go down a bracket to the sub 20K cars and start looking at, you know, what a good, good dependable, reliable, well-equipped 
sort of 20 or sub 20k the family you cars. Estimate. I literally got so overexcited. Yeah, yeah. The minute you step away from like, I was like, why do, you know, who needs a premium European whatever? Status image. It, yeah, literally. literally. And I'm a sucker for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how much car can I get for 25k? So this is now kind of an area where you're slightly focusing some of your attention on. And I had a quick look on the website. You have a very nice... Well, you have the Tiguan's a bit more expensive than that, isn't it? But you had a few things. You had a Kia in. You had a nice Golf in. I think. Oh, no, an A3 maybe. You had, anyway, so you've got cars. Yeah, so yeah. where... What do you see as the good picks sub 20K? And I've got a few that I'm going to lob your way and you can fire back at me whether you think they're good or bad choices. So <laughs> if I was to come to you, I'm a customer. All right, Tony. That's my voice when I'm buying a car, by the way. I no, don't, it's I don't, not. I don't, yeah, I do. I put on a voice. Do you? Yeah, because I think if I put... Uh, hello, I'm calling about the Jaguar XF Sport. <laughs> All right, mate. Yeah, I've seen a green and tan sport break on yeah, the website. Yeah. So I've called you up. Oh, is that Tony? I so said, I'm looking for a 20 k Is that what they say? 20 k what's, what's, what's that in slang? A monkey? No, it's 500. What, what's 20K? 20 grand. 20 grand. Got yeah. 20 grand to spend. I need four or seats. Or 20 quid. 20 quid. Yeah. Four seats. Got to be practical, got to be an automatic, got to be fairly fully loaded, mate. I want all the tail and parking sensors. My wife will crash otherwise. I want it to be reliable. What, mate, are, honestly, what are we talking? The world, world's your oyster. I mean, flipping. I mean, where do I start? First? Okay, I don't want a hatchback. Cool. There we go. That helps you out. It does help me out. So, three cars that come to mind. And I am a genius, but I, I have been briefed on this. So please don't think that I'm not that much of a genius. I did he text did, Tony last he night has saying, me up. I think this will be our... He's warmed me up. This will be one of our topics. <laughs> so I, I did have a little bit of thinking time. He ain't put me on the spot. Although even if he did, I'd still pluck three out of the sky. <laughs> so so number one, mm -hmm. free series touring. For for 20K? Yes. What year? More be an older car. What year? Like 2017 car. So the old shape. Yeah. But, but mate, that is all the car you could ever want. They literally do everything. But I'm trying to think of, because I've had a little bit of time, I'm thinking of three different segments. See? Sure. So I like no, to give a cool. bit of variety instead of just piling in and then taking the mics off and walking that's out. That's good advice. Basically. I'm a customer here. I'm, I'm no customer. longer your podcast co-host. I'm right. a customer. You are selling me a car. So, okay, so what kind of engine are we talking about? Like a 320 M Sport petrol or diesel. I'd probably lean towards the petrol because of the DPFs. Okay. Um, so, especially a lot of town driving. Your wife doesn't do loads of miles. So, a petrol... No problem. Potter around, Good a little toy. And I'm, I, I, I'm not going to get car play and stuff like that, but I could obviously retrofit. Put car play in. Put, put, put car play in. Yeah. Is there anything that I need to look at uh, spec-wise that's important? Or just get an M-Sport. I mean, get an M-Sport. Yeah, yeah, pretty and much. And what's reliability? That, that era, because that's the thing, when you start looking towards the more premium Euro brands, I don't want to get caught up in, you know, yeah, reliability or servicing costs. Are they fairly affordable to right. Yeah, variable servicing. Okay. Obviously, they're, they're every two years, so the car tells you, and it goes in stages, obviously. So you've got brake fluid, um, oil, and filters, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're f fairly... You can get them... You don't have to get them serviced at BMW. You can go to a good independent to get them serviced at that point. So it's not that expensive to, to run... Okay. Um, tires would be a little bit spiteful because it's still a, a premium car. Um, again, if she's not doing loads of miles, mate, you never you never put a set of tires on it. No, no and obviously but, we're going to share this car, which is why I'm getting involved. That's because fine. if it was just a car for herself, she'd go yeah, and buy yeah. something for herself. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is we're going to incorporate this with a bit of stock watch. Okay. Watching the stock. <laughs> so I've literally just thrown in your criteria. Uh-huh. 20K, uh -huh. the first car that comes up. So shout out for a seller in Gloucester. It's a 2020 330D yeah. Sport Touring Auto X Drive with yeah. 32,000 miles. Lovely. So it's actually not the old, old shape. It's actually a newer shape. Yeah. So a lovely diesel. Um, obviously... Yeah, so 2020 new shape. 20 grand. Uh, 20 grand. Bang on 20 grand. Got BMW service history. Uh, 45 MPG in the real world. So this is the diesel, which you said you were... Uh, a few minor stone chips. The person's saying, here we go. It's uh, Oh, this is an ex-police car. Ah. 
Well, that's an odd life. But it's it's got, been regularly serviced, though, by the way. Yeah, but, but it's got bad options. So, yeah. also, let's go. The one down is a 2018. So, yes, the older shape, 335D with 95,000 miles. Bit of a disaster. Too many miles. Oh, put so. the miles at... Put the miles at... No, here... We, uh, what, what do you think the miles should be? But, but put the miles up to 50. 50,000 miles. Okay, so here, here is, here's the car, mate. Here's the car. It's a 2020, 47,000 mile, 320i. Perfect. The right shape. Yeah. It's got uh, reversing camera, as yep. you would want. BMW connected systems, all that lot. Yeah. It's, it's actually a lovely car. Lovely. There it is. There you go. Okay, so let's, let's screenshot that one. Boom. It's good enough. Good enough, mate. Yeah, all the car you could ever want. Drives, lovely. Bit of, bit of status. Hold its money because it's a BMW. And looks premium as. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, you know, you could easily convince someone that that was a 40 grand car because it's the newer shape with yeah. the nice lights, all that, things like that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, quite good at this. Next one. Yeah, next one. Move on. Next one will be, I'm going to go like, because it's all family, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go... SUV market. Sure. Because that, that is the, the biggest market in the country. Of course. So I'm going to go like Qashqai Sportage. Yeah. Them, them too. Oh, I love a Qashqai. And I've got a new shape Sportage in stock. I took it in part exchange for a Focus RS, oddly enough. Strange. Yeah, odd. But, mate, what a car. Can we just agree that Kia smashing it with the design at the minute? Yeah, got seven-year warranties oh. on them. They don't go wrong. They're absolutely bulletproof. Quite nice interiors as well. well honestly, when I sat, it's got the big screens like, like yeah. my M3. Yeah. The two big, big, honestly, uh, what a car. And the, the seats are a remind me of like Golf, GTI Golf R type vibe. Yeah, yeah. Bit of Alcantara going on. Line, so you can have a GT line and then there's one up from that as well. Yeah. So, and then you can have an auto. I mean, the, the newer shaped car that I've got um, is a bit more than 20. Okay. But, but um, if you're talking Sportage in general... I mean, what a car. So, obviously, that's that. That's its own platform. It's not like, you know, you get the Cupra, which is essentially an A3 yeah, or whatever yeah. like that. So, um, stands alone, but it, it's shared with, you were saying it's shared with Hyundai. 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 Yeah. yeah. Hyundai. Um, but what is its equivalent? So, if we were to make a European equivalent, is that a Tiguan rival or what is that? Yeah. So, oh, it is literally a Tiguan, Tiguan or a okay. Q3, Q3, probably. Okay. So, I've got a... Just to give you an idea and pricing. So I've got a Tiguan in stock. It's a 2018. It's done similar miles to the Kia. Yeah. So it's four years older and it's more money than the Kia. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I've got a, an, a Q3 four sprung about to come in on a, so it's a new shape car, so 69 plate, which is what it compete with. Done more miles. Yeah. But it's got everything on it, this, this okay. uh, Audi. It's going to be like 26 and a half yeah. grand or something. This is what's insane. What's wrong and with we'll the new car? spec, right? We'll have no, less it's stuff. a four-sprung. So oh, it, sorry, it's got a four-sprung. I missed that. Sorry. It's got everything on it, but it's done like double the miles and it's three years older. Okay, so hold on a second. So I'm just looking at, uh, to be harsh on you. Yeah. At, at the hard 20K line, yeah. you are getting the older shape Sportage. It's a 2020, so it's not an old car. Or a 21 it's, car you'll get, yeah. Mm, oh, yeah, 21 car. Yeah, there yeah. you go. So yeah. with 24,000 miles. I know that because I've got a 21 plate coming in park exchange, okay. so I know they're 20 grand. Was there a big leap? Did did Kia, like, you know, because visually there is, but is this a kind of car where, you know, Kia are making leaps and bounds each year and actually you want to try and push yourself because the interior doesn't look quite as no. European. It's a bit cheaper look and feel. I'm just browsing now. Yeah, the new shape car looks like a European car. Inside. Yeah, looks yeah. levels above. Yeah. So I might argue with you a little bit there that that doesn't quite, because you're doing a classic salesman you technique. You asked me if, what car to get, and yeah, I'm no, telling no, you. you, are, you are, and what the cash car is another one. No, but it's like going around an, with an estate agent, where you go, right, my budget's 300 grand, yeah. and they sell you out, and you go, this house is perfect. They go, great, it's 375. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> no, because like, where am I getting the 75 grand from? But, but it's not 75 grand, it's another couple of three grand. Okay, so let me put the budget If up. you've got 20, you've got 23. When I do you though, mate, you say this. Yes, because most people finance their cards. It's like another 20 quid a month. That's a bit more than that. So I can't, okay, there we go. 22 another and a half. 50 quid a month. 22 and a half. I've got a 1.6 GT line, you said? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a freaking lovely car. 30,000 miles. What a looker, mate. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. 20, 22 and a half thou. Yeah. So if you're buying that from Tony, that's at least 19 because he's taken a massive margin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
19, you're joking. <laughs> That went over your head 15. a bit. That went over your head. <laughs> <laughs> but that's got the, but that's a manual. But oh mate, that is a lovely car inside. Yeah. yeah. I think that's the car. It, oh, it? there's a brown one! Oh no. Oh, there's a brown one. <laughs> oh, that's the one I'm including in the stock watch. Oh, he's put it in. Shout out to uh, SG Petch Richmond. Oh, it's down the road, mate. Down the road, get down there and get a deposit on what it. What a thing. Does it come with car play and stuff? Brown oh, here one. we go. Wireless CarPlay. Perfect. Wireless Apple CarPlay on the 22 and a half grand brown Kia Sportage. <laughs> yeah. What a weapon. Yeah. Annoying that it's manual because Vicky can't drive manual fish. Shame. Yeah. Okay, I'll let you have it. I still think you've cheated a little bit in a classic but, car but, dealer. Right, but, but then, but then go the cash, what's go the cash Kai. Oh yeah, cash Kai's a vibe. It's the same thing. Cash Kai blows me away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we talk about it every now and again. We rented that one from literally from like Hertz or Europe car. Yeah. Fully loaded yeah. for nineteen grand. CarPlay, pan roof, cruise yeah, yeah. control, heated seats. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it looks as good as that Kia. It doesn't. No, that definitely Kia's not. Wonderful. Yeah. So, okay. You, you've uh, had your SUV. Them too. No, there's another SUV coming. Tell me. But this is a this is a more premium one. Bit older, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. bit more expensive, but unbelievable value for money. Mm-hmm. Range Rover Sport. Shut up. Twenty Twi- grand. <gasps> you get like a 2015 car. Really? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, there's insurance problems in the at, UK. In the UK, and there's some reliability problems as well. But, mate, you're driving a Range Rover, a newish looking car. Okay, so a Range Rover Sport. Sport. Up to 20 grand. Up to 20 grand. Oh, wow. Yeah. What so, a, yeah. Mate, what a car. So, for listeners, this is the prior shape. Think of the SVR, the old SVR, not the like new SVR. 2014, 2015 car. Yeah, but just, yeah. just you know, not everyone's going to know what that, which one that looks like. It's not the yeah, boxy yeah. one. It's literally the last generation. Yeah, so think yeah. of the old SVR. It's, yeah, it's yeah. that shape. Yep. So here we go. Good example for our last topic. One of the first cars that comes up, Cat N. Uh-uh. Now, they are leggy cars at 20 grand. We're looking at nearly 100,000 miles. No, there will be some with less There's miles. There's some at 75,000. There's one at 46,000. Yeah, yeah. So there's a three litre diesel V6 yep. at 46,000. But you're right. Cars that look more valuable than they are, if you rock up at your mate's house in one of these... That fits 50 grand car. They are leggy cars, though, mate. Here we go. Here's another 64,000 mile car. That's a good one. That's the one I'm going to include right yeah. there. It's, a, it's another three litre diesel. And yeah, they think it's more than fit. They think that's a seventy-five grand car. Yeah, it yeah. is a. That's a great spec. So for listeners, I'm looking at a silvery gold pan roof, black interior, lovely and cushy. Looks as I say, up to date. Lovely and cushy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Told you, man. I'm putting a bit of an accent here when I when I do. It's metallic, metallic Aruba deployable tow bar. Yeah, sixty-four thousand miles. The the garage in Bramham. Well, the prop the problem with that car. As a lot of you know, is one trying to insure the bloody thing because in the UK they do get stolen and a and lot. they do have you'll have a, some big maintenance bills. They do carry a few problems then. But flipping out, what a car for twenty grand! Is that good though to be suggesting or recommending a, a family car that might break? But down? some people are happy with that, mate. Like the mar- that market's mm. big. Some people are happy to have you know to compromise a bit of reliability and a bit of. Uh, for a bit of prestige. Yes. Pre- yeah. I'm one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Have you considered a Maserati Gran Turismo? <laughs> um, okay, so that's a great shout. Let me throw some curveballs out. You can bash them back at me. We'll do a bit of quick fire. Uh-huh. Volvo XC40. Yeah, great car. Great car? Great car. Because they're sort of circa, you know, that kind of money. Are Seem they 20 well, grand now? Yeah, you can no. find some 20 grand. It's a bit of the Kia Sportage vibe. Like they're yeah, yeah. hovering at 20. Takes um, a bit. That that screen's a bit laboured and slow now, though. That 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 main infotainment scene it needs updating. The, yeah, the Volvo fine. One. Yeah, so li- tech wise. Mm, yeah, okay, I mean, it's got all the tech in it. But sure, but if you want Apple CarPlay, you're going to have to hack it. It's not going to be inbuilt. Uh, no, it should have CarPlay. But what I mean is, all a bit dim witted and slow. Fine, and fair. It, it's not like the but, like but what we reliable, spoke about. fairly oh, yeah. cheap to run. Oh yeah. L- Built like a, a bit of a prestige brand, I think, Volvo. Absolutely. Today. Great, great brand I like that. in general. What about a non quadrifolio Alpha Julia? Just like the diesel Julia. Uh, I'd go the petrol one because of 280 horsepower. Fair. 
get the speciale one or the one with a bit of spec on it. Um, we get them in from time to time. Mate, that, all right? my first ever experience in a Julia was just a, the Bogo standard one. Yeah. The non and I thought, and I had one on loan. One of my first ever press loans as seen through glass was I think a diesel, maybe it's a petrol. Anyway, but still mega car because you get all the theatre with the big paddles. You get the beautiful looks, maybe not aggression, but you get the beautiful looks. Lovely place, lovely seating, but driving position, yeah. things like that. Crap tech again. Mm, you'd have the BMW. Slow, you'd have the BMW still though over that. But we're talking about alternatives. You, yeah, know, yeah. you know me, I'm always going to come at you with uh, a slightly quirky choice. Yeah, yeah, fair. But yeah, if, if unless you need to be well healed, you'd probably still buy the BMW. Yeah, okay, maybe. Mercedes. Yeah. What about an early C-Class or a GLA, something of that ilk? Uh, again, both of them, they're all right. As in... Um, I sold a C250 AMG Premium Plus with 50,000 miles on it. 2017 car. Lovely. Last week for like 18 grand. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. A tad more expensive to run mm, than the BMW. Yeah. It's just slightly older and no, it's all right. It's okay. They're yearly servicing, not variable like the BMW. A slightly older car as well, so entertainment system not quite as good. And a bit of an Uber vibe about you? Mm. But good on fuel. Well, yeah, but you yeah. know what I mean? Like, I remember, this is maybe a UK problem, or at least a German problem, <laughs> Germany problem. I remember my mum bought, she went from S like A4 cab, S5, S5 to E class. Yeah. And everyone called her a, a taxi driver. An from, Uber. Yeah. Mm. Wasn't, it was pre Uber. Uber. Yeah. There was, oh, why have you bought a taxi? And she was mm. devastated. She had six months sold it. Oh, wow. Because they still have that vibe, you know, and if you're, if it's like a fairly affordable C class or E class, I think people might think they're the, yeah, you're, you're their enough. Ubers and jump in the back by mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bit like the, bit like Skoda. Oh, that was one. Skoda Octavia Sup or no, Superb. You want Super the Superb. That's the big one, right? That's Flipping the A6 hell. rival. What a car that is, by the way. Massive no, boot, no famously. No one buys them unless you're a taxi driver. Yeah. But, but flipping hell. You get the sport line, one of them. You get like a what year? Three year old one, like a wow. 20, 20, 20, 21 yeah. sport line. Flipping what a car, mate. The, the world is your oyster. Yeah, but literally. I'm most turned on by that Kia Sportage. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. That is a vibe. It's good enough. And I just think Kia are just making moves. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're making moves <laughs> and they're easy to pronounce. And Hyundai. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, the cash car is the more sensible choice and the biggest seller in the country. But that Sportage, I'm going to go check some out. Yeah. Well, actually, wait, is your one? I oh, know your one's manual. There's I want to drive one. There's a there's a lot, mate. There's mm. a lot of Sportages on the road. Yeah, and on the market. Millions well. of them, yeah. yeah. But that's the, as you say, the world is your oyster at that sort of 20K-ish mark for lots of nice bits of kit. Family and cars. Family cars, yeah, 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 exactly. And I think, you know, that that's my whole remit is like, actually, you know, m maybe there's a, a nice... You know, this is the bum around car, you know. Yeah. I'm probably going to get something nicer, you know. Anyway, let's not bore you all because I know every week, what's Sam going to buy this week? <laughs> Based on my Ferrari factory tour, it's going to be a 550 Ferrari. Oh, oh my God. No, that's what I looked at. I looked at 456... 612 Scaglietti, 550, 575, and Roma. <laughs> Punch it. And you know the other one I looked at, mate? <gasps> Here's a shout. Gen 1 Californias. There is a car <laughs> for sale at a Ferrari dealership. Like 60 grand? At the, the Ferrari one is 75. Right. But they're like 50 or 60 grand for a Gen 1 California. And I know... With some miles on it. It's basically a Maserati and people don't love it. It's still a Ferrari. It's a terrible car, it's, mate. It's, I it's, no, 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 no. It is not a terrible car. It's a terrible Ferrari. Yes. Yeah. Terrible Ferrari. Yeah. Good car. Um, and why we say it's a terrible Ferrari? Because it doesn't feel like a Ferrari. Just get a Portofino. That's a much better car. Well, Portofino M, I still will. I will remain to this day. They're way too much fight money, Yes. But I don't know if that's because the Roma Spider hasn't come out yet or because everyone is listening to this podcast <laughs> and agreeing with me. Portofino M. That, if I had a lot of money, that's what I'm going to go and buy and I'm going to really? sit on it because I think that's the... <laughs> you think that'll car. only be 100 grand? <laughs> well, that's an investment. <laughs> that might be 75. That'll be 100. They're that suddenly going to bomb. The minute Roma Spiders turn up, they're going to bomb. But it's yeah. because you can't get a convertible in that yeah, yeah. format at the moment. But yeah. it may, it is a Roma Spider. So yeah. what people don't realise is the Portofino M is the Roma Spider. Yeah, just yeah. with a hard top, not a soft top. Correct. 
So, you know, it's oh, what a thing. <laughs> Alexander's Prestige had one coming the other day. And I said, oh, did they? I sent Andrew a message the other day saying, just do, let's do something. This is a brand deal. Come on. <laughs> just sell me the car for like 50 grand. No. And he was like, he was like ha, 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 ha. Yeah, yeah, so but what does did. that mean? Yeah. Come on. We no, can do that something. means. Yeah. Damn you, Andrew. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, there we go. Some consumer advice today. Cat N, Cat S cars, should you, shouldn't you? Um, cheap or, no, sorry, we shouldn't say cheap. Affordable family cars, sub 20K. And the fact that Ferrari is still great. <laughs> of course. Despite the fact that we don't actually want any of their new cars. Um, we actually don't, do we? We don't. It's weird. But I did, as I say, going around the factory, <laughs> what did it make me want? It made me, made me want an 812 Competizione. It made me want to drive an SF90XX. It made me want to pour a Sangue. Yep, I said it. It made me want a Roma. I didn't want a 296, even though they're so good. I didn't want a 296. Mm, well, everyone would agree with you because there's 60 of them on the market. Yeah, and it made me want to be a course of clear into programme. But most of all, the biggest thing is it made me want to buy all the classic fries. Because mm. I said, I was there to visit the Classic A programme. If you get involved with that, mate, the archive, you'll see it all in the main channel video. I'm imploring you all go watch that. The, cla the, uh, the Ferrari archive, mate. <laughs> Any car you've bought... They know they have all the information. Right? Yeah, it's unbelievable. It's it's actually terrifying. Yeah, I'll just leave you with this one anecdote, which will feature in the main channel. Sterling Moss, famously, his two hundred and fifty GTO is that pastel green one. You've seen that pastel green two hundred and fifty GTO. Let me bring it up now. If you if you just see help it, me out here, um, mate, because I don't really look at anything really. Sterling Moss two hundred and fifty GTO green. It's this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah 1962, yeah. 250 Was that GTO Moss made for car? Sterling Moss. Right. Yeah. So, oh, right. if you haven't seen it before, it is a 250 GTO, one of the most valuable cars in the world, made in this kind of lime green pastel colour. Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Back in the day, when they were doing the communication with Sterling, he said, I want, I want it in a custom colour. And so Enzo was like, sure, what do you want? So, well, there's a specific material that I have, and I don't know what the material is for, but he said, I want it to match this. And they have the actual sample, the, Do the, they? the two centimetre square cut of material that he sent to Italy for them to colour match. Amazing. So, you know, all the correspondence, all the information, the back and the forth, the custom colour, and they have the actual patch that he sent from the 1960s, still in its folder, still in its little passport. And they have that, they have that amount of detail for every single car amazing from 1940s to, to, to today yeah so um you know people ask what's the point and what's the you know my car my challenge to Dali, if i wanted to i could go and find out every single bit of information about when it was ordered new where it was on the production line what date who ordered it where it went to any options that maybe have changed in years or haven't changed just i mean it's everything it's yeah. all there yeah, yeah yeah it's all there it blew my mind anyway next week's episode uh, actually, for the, let's give you a heads up here. So, next week's episode might be a little bit different because I think we're going to be doing a normal episode but in a special car. So, we've been doing a few more Rate My Rides. This is going to be something similar to that. Stay tuned. I don't even know about this. I'll tell you afterwards. Good job. Thank the you. week after, we will be on the BTG Tour of Portugal. Oh, oh. Our first ever tour yeah that's that is two weeks it's two weeks have we got to record a podcast out there so we will be doing an episode during the tour but it may be with you late so we're giving you a heads up now that not next week but but the week after the episode may we be with you later than usual yeah okay so stay with us but we want to record an episode during the actual tour to talk we're going to record it with the gang exactly yeah i think that's, that's a good the whole idea. point maybe yeah. get them involved rate their cars tell people why they should have bought something different whatever <laughs> it might be well, i can't wait the cars that are coming i can't really go in on it because they're we all like mega all. <laughs> we like them all um so yeah so that, that just give me a heads up on that is that yeah two weeks time it may not be a if you're a youtube viewer thursday lunchtime if you're an audio listener tuesday or wednesday upload um, but bear with us. We are very excited for that week. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Uh, if you're listening to us, please uh, give us a review on whatever audio platform you're listening to us on. If you're watching us, uh, you can subscribe, turn on notifications. If you want to follow Tony, in the meantime, he is at Tony Gravelwood Car Sales on most social media platforms. I'm at Seen Through Glass, and this podcast is at Behind the Glass underscore underscore podcast. We'll be back with you for a slightly quirky episode next week. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>